fourth grade cougars, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving break and you're ready to get back to learning about some rocks, my favorite topic. Um, the, before we left, we were talking about weathering, how rocks break into smaller pieces. And here it is, weathering. So I can take a really big rock, oh, like that. That's a boulder. It's a really big rock. And I can break it into smaller pieces. And the next size down is something like this. It's called a cobble. So a rock this size, about the size of a grapefruit, is called a cobble. The cobble keeps breaking into smaller pieces and turns into something like pebbles. The pebbles keep breaking into smaller pieces and turns into something like this, gravel. Gravel starts breaking into smaller pieces and turns into sand. Sand turns into silt. And if that silt stays in water for a long time, it turns into clay. Clay is the smallest earth substance. And the process of turning oh, a big rock like this into a grain of sand is weathering. And when we looked at the four types of soils that we had, we saw that weathering was taking place. This one was the mountain. And in the mountain, the soils found near the mountain, there were larger pebbles and gravel. There was not as much sand and silt because those rocks are breaking. They are breaking in that location. And as a result, they haven't broken into smaller and smaller pieces yet. On the mountain, a lot of times there are forests. And so you still have lots of bigger rocks, but you have some organic matter, dead plants and, and leaves and things like that, that turns, that makes the soil dark. When you get farther away, if you get uh, in towards a, a, a desert area, it's farther away from a mountain, and so the rocks have broken and into smaller and smaller pieces. So in the desert, you see lots of gravel and sand and silt. And at the river delta, let's say the river has been carrying the rock for a long ways from the mountain. Those rocks keep getting smaller and smaller. They keep weathering and breaking until what's left at the end are the smallest pieces, very small gravel, sand and silt, and maybe some clay. So we looked and saw that rocks can be broken into pieces by weathering. And the kind of weathering that we talked about when they crash into each other and break into smaller and smaller pieces is called physical weathering because it's a physical activity. They crash into each other, it's physical. But there is another way that rocks can break into smaller pieces and to be changed and broken, and that is called chemical weathering. And so today we are going to do some chemical weathering. I have a couple of cups and you might want to get a couple of cups like that. And I want you to take out some rocks. You probably have some rocks that look kind of like this. It's white and a little cube. This is called calcite. And a lot of rocks contain calcite. This is actually a mineral, but a lot of rocks contain this mineral. And I also gave you a shell, some shells, and some other rocks. What we're going to do is that we're going to put some vinegar in these cups and we're going to see what happens to the rocks when we put the vinegar and the rocks together. I have a big bottle of vinegar. I have white vinegar. It doesn't have to be white vinegar. It's easier to see when you have white vinegar um, because it's transparent but I think you'll be able to see the bubbles even if it's not white vinegar. Okay, and now I'm going to start with this little cube of calcite and I'm gonna put it in the vinegar. And I'm gonna see if you can observe something. Ooh, do you see that? Do you see all of those bubbles coming off of the top of the calcite? The vinegar is chemically reacting with the calcite 
and is slowly dissolving the calcite. So if I left this calcite in here for a long time, like maybe a couple of days, I would come back and the calcite would be completely gone. It would be all dissolved. Okay, so I'm gonna take it out because I don't want my calcite to be completely dissolved. And now I know that if there are bubbles coming off of the rock um, consistently, not just a couple of air bubbles, then I know that that rock contains calcite because calcite reacts with vinegar. So I have a piece of sandstone it's very gritty and sandy. It's made out of sand. And I'm going to put it in my vinegar. Very interesting. This rock also contains what? Calcite. So this sandstone, in addition to having sand, also has some calcite in the rock. Very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna try another material. This is granite. It's black and white. You might have one of these or you might have a pinkish white one. I'm going to put it in my vinegar. Here's the vinegar. I see some bubbles there. But you know what? I'm wondering if there was maybe some um, dust on it at the beginning because now, after that initial bubble, I don't see any bubbles coming off the granite. Granite should not have calcite in it. Granite should have quartz and um, hornblende and mica and a couple of other like feldspars, but it should not have calcite. And this test shows that this rock does not have calcite because it is not bubbling. Okay, I'm gonna take this one out. And this is something called limestone. And I don't know if you can see, but there are lots of shell fragments in this limestone. And I'm gonna put it in my vinegar. And you can see it is really active. There are bubbles coming off of this limestone very aggressively. So this is chemical weathering. Over time, if I left this, vin this in, in here for a couple days, I would come back and the rock would be completely dissolved. There would be nothing left of the rock. So instead of breaking into smaller pieces by physical weathering, this rock is going to be broken into pieces by chemical weathering. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to sacrifice one of your shells that I gave you. I have a shell. It's a pretty little shell. And I'm going to put it in the vinegar. And right now, it's not doing that much because the shell is very um, compact. Oh, but now it's starting to react. And I'm gonna ask that you leave the shell in the vinegar overnight. And I want you to see what happens to your shell in the morning when you get up. So you guys might be thinking to yourselves, uh, so what, Mrs. Belatesh? I don't go around and put vinegar on rocks. We don't have vinegar uh, just falling from the sky all the time and making rocks dissolve. And that is where you are wrong. 
So have you guys ever heard of something called acid rain? Well, acid rain is this phenomenon that when we burn coal and we burn other fossil fuels, we create the smoke and some of this smoke it has some sulfur in it. And when that sulfur uh, is burned, there's something called sulfur dioxide. And when that sulfur dioxide, which is a gas, kind of like carbon dioxide, when it's in the air and it rains, the sulfur dioxide attaches to a water molecule. And when, then it falls down as a very weak acid. Vinegar is a weak acid. And so over time, over hundreds of years, thousands of years, any rocks that contain calcite or limestone or shells will be slowly, slowly worn away. They will be chemically weathered. Please get out your science notebook and turn to the table of contents. We're on number 10, weathering. And mine is on page 20. 20. And then turn to the page where you're going to do your work. Make sure you put the date at the top of the page. And then I want you to title it weathering. And I want you to write a little bit about what weathering is. And this is what I wrote in my journal. Weathering is when rocks are broken into smaller pieces in nature. The largest rock is called a boulder. As the boulder is broken into pieces, it becomes smaller and smaller. The smallest sized rock is clay. There are two types of weathering. Physical weathering is where rocks bump and roll and break. Chemical weathering is when acid rain chemically breaks rocks that contain the mineral calcite. Okay, remember to add a question. What do you still want to learn about? About rocks and weathering or anything like that. I will see you next week, guys. Bye.